Hello and welcome to an additional episode of the review and recap series for the OCR History B Living Under Nazi Rule topic. Um, in the next few videos we're going to be looking at how you apply the knowledge that you've hopefully gained over watching the content videos uh, on this channel and from your lessons and from the textbooks and things like that. How do you apply that knowledge to the actual exam? And we're going to take an in-depth look into the three different types of questions that you will get on the Living Under Nazi Rule paper, which are the 7 mark question, the 15 mark question, and then the 18 mark question to finish off with. This video in particular is going to start us off with the first one, which is the 7 mark question. So, the first step of any GCSE history question is to actually work out what the question is asking you, to have a proper look at it and to break it down into its component parts. Now, the Nazi Germany paper is a source paper. This means that you will be given pieces of written or visual evidence from the time period, so from the 1930s through to the 1945 at the end of the Second World War, uh, from that time period uh, being studied, and you will be asked to do different things with it. Now, in terms of types of sources that you might be given, you could be given a portrait or a picture, you could be given a diary uh, written by somebody from the time, you could be given a letter, it could be a speech which has then been transcribed and written down, you could be given a newspaper article, or you could be given some reports and statistics from that time as well. Now, the form that these sources uh, may take will vary. Um, you could get different types of source um, throughout the paper. They might not all be the same. And it's really important that we understand generally what the point of each of these types of sources are so that we can make an inference about their purpose, production or receipt. But we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail towards the end. So... Let's go back to the start. What is the question actually asking you? Well, if you had the question that's just flashed up on the board of what can source A tell us about the Knights of the Long Knives, use the source and your own knowledge to support your answer. It's really easy to work out what the focus of a seven mark question is because quite a large chunk of it will always stay the same no matter what Nazi Germany paper you sit. So every single year, chunks of this question will remain exactly the same in terms of wording and then that means you've just got to hone in on a specific part of the Nazi Germany topic. So in terms of this question, the focus is the Knight of the Long Knives. That's the uh, kind of focus that the question is guiding you towards as part of this topic. The bit that's underlined in blue then, so what can source A tell us about and then use the source and your own knowledge to support your answer, will always stay the same on every single seven mark question. It's just that little bit that's highlighted in yellow that will change for each specific paper that you are sitting. So that's the focus. We know immediately the source that we're going to have in front of us is going to tell us something about the Knights of the Long Knives and it's up to us to actually read through the source, read through the provenance to work out what uh, it's saying about that particular event. Okay, so focus in yellow. So now that we've worked out what the focus is and we've highlighted it on our exam paper, our next step is to actually read the source itself. We actually need to have, take an in-depth look and look at what it's telling us about the Knight of the Long Knives in this instance. So we've got the question at the top, we've already highlighted it just to keep it uh, fresh in our minds so that it's always at the, the front of what we're thinking about when we're reading this source. And if we have the source that looks like that, so you've got it in the grey box there with the kind of checkered outline, you can see at the top there is a bit in bold and it says Source A, an extract from Goebbels' diary on June, uh, in June, sorry, that should say in 1934. Now this line that's in top, uh, at the top in bold will always kind of stand out to you and it should be the first thing that your eyes are kind of drawn to because it's the top thing that you're going to read in that source if it is a text source. So it should be the first thing that kind of your eyes come across as you, you flick down the source. Now this line at the top in bold is what's known as the provenance. Now the provenance is really, really important to our understanding of a source because it tells us lots of key information. The way that we can break down the kinds of things that we are looking for in the provenance is to look out for the following things. So the first thing that we need to look out from the provenance is who wrote it, said it, drew it, who has made this source that we are looking at. Once we've worked out who it is, so for example in this instance it's an extract from Goebbels' diary, so we know this is from Joseph Goebbels, we now need to be thinking, right, what do we know about this specific person at this time? What do we know in terms of their motives? This should all come from your revision. You should know the person who has written this or has uh, talked about it. It shouldn't be anybody that you are unfamiliar with. And if it is somebody slightly maybe outside of the topic that we've looked at, they will normally tell you in the provenance exactly who they are. But again, you'll be able to work out roughly what they want from your own revision. 
So you need to be thinking about, right, what does Goebbels want in June of 1934? And how useful are their views? So a common error that I often see, if it's a source produced by a member of the Nazi leadership, which is often the case on the source papers, if it's from Hitler himself, Lots of students tend to say, oh, well, because this is from Hitler, or in this instance Goebbels, who is obviously a Nazi official, it's biased, therefore we can't trust the word they say, therefore they're lying, therefore the source isn't very useful. All of that won't get you very far, and it's not good history. Because this has been written by Goebbels, who is a very high-ranking Nazi official, this actually makes this source incredibly useful, because it gives us a really good insight into what the Nazis, the Nazi leadership, are thinking in June 1934 about the Knights of the Long Knives. So it would be very detrimental to your answers if you start talking about, oh, well, they're lying, therefore we can't trust them. Okay, try and get rid of those thoughts as much as you can and actually think, right, well, if it's from them, yes, we know they might be misleading us if it's maybe written towards the public, but how is that useful? What are they trying to do with what they are saying? Okay, so that's the first step. Who wrote it? Goebbels in this instance. The next question that we need to ask ourselves from the provenance is when is it produced? So I've highlighted it on the screen there. It's from June 1934. So you need, now need to be thinking, right, June 1934, from my revision, what do I know about this time? What's the context of this time? What's going on just before this source has been produced? What's going on just afterwards? What has this source done to try and influence the time around that it's being produced? Okay, and again, what does that tell us about that person's views, thoughts at this specific time? Last question that we need to ask ourselves is what actually is the source, okay? What is the source that you have got in front of you? In this instance, it's a diary extract, okay? Um, and then once you've worked out what actually you're looking at, whether it's a portrait, whether it's a speech, whether it's a, a secret letter, you need, now need to think, right, well, how is this useful? Who is the intended audience of this? If it's a newspaper article, well, obviously, the intended audience is the wider German public. If it's a diary extract, well, because normally diaries are supposed to be private uh, recordings of thoughts, you would expect this to be just sort of for his own self-reflection. So that makes it very useful because he's not intending to talk to anybody about this. It's just for his eyes only, really. So that makes it really useful because we can work out what his innermost thoughts are about the Night of the Long Knives. Um, but like I said, on the flip side, if it's a portrait, normally that's for a larger audience. So what are they trying to do with this particular source? How does what the source is influence what they are actually saying in there? Okay, because if it's written for different audiences, it might skew what they're saying slightly. And you've got to work out, well, how has that had an impact on what they're saying? In this instance, though, it's a diary extract. Um, now, once you have kind of broken down the provenance, you've worked out the who, the when, the what, you should start to be thinking at the back of your mind, right, well, why has this uh, been produced at this specific time by this specific person? Those thoughts should start to, to come to you once you've broken down the provenance. But once you've kind of worked your way through the provenance, you actually need to read the source itself. Because this, the question's asking you, what can the source tell us about the Night of the Long Knives? So we need to actually have a read of the source. So it says, execution's nearly finished, a few more are necessary. That is difficult, but necessary. It is difficult, but it uh, but is not, however, to be avoided. There must be peace for 10 years. The whole afternoon with the Fuhrer. I can't leave him alone. He suffers greatly, but is hard. The death sentences are received with the greatest seriousness. All in all, about 60. Right, so we've read through the source. Now we need to be thinking, we've read through it once. Now we need to be thinking, right, let's go back to the focus of the question, the Night of the Long Knives. Let's get our highlighters out. What can we actually work out about the Night of the Long Knives from what is being told to us, from what is being said? So I've highlighted a few key quotes that if I was reading that, I think I would uh, underline or, or put a squiggly line around or highlight in the exam um, because you're going to need to back up whatever your inferences are about the, uh, the Night of the Long Knives with a quote. So just to recap what an inference is, I put a little definition in the yellow box there. An inference is what we can work out about the chosen topic, in this instance, the Night of the Long Knives, from the evidence provided to us. It's kind of like an educated guess. And the best way to back that up, as I've said, is to highlight quotes that you can then lift directly and put into your answer. So we've broken down the provenance, we've got the focus of the question, we've uh, had a look at some inferences. So just to recap again what the question is at the top. Now we need to actually put our plan and our highlighting into uh, some um, 
sentences, obviously, to construct our answer. So the first step that you are going to do for a seven mark question is to make an inference about the focus. So tell us what source A tells us about the Night of the Long Knives. And you're just simply going to start off with source A tells me that dot, dot, dot about the uh, Night of the Long Knives. Okay. Once you've made your inference, you then need to back that up with a quote. So to prove to the examiner that you've not just had a lucky guess and that you have evidence for the inference that you are making, the best way to show the examiner that is to lift the quote that you've just highlighted on the previous slide and to use that in your answer. Now, you, need, uh, you do need to be careful and make sure that the quote you are um, including does match your inference. You can't just take any random part of the source the last two words, for example, and, and hope that that matches the inference, you need to actually back up the inference with a relevant quote. It's got to be relevant to the inference that you've made. And once you've included that quote, you then need to develop what that quote actually means and what it's telling us. So you will use the sentence starter. A quote to support this is, quotation marks, quote, close quotation marks. This shows us that, and that's where you're going to develop what the quote actually tells us. The third step then is to identify the purpose of the source. So when I'm talking about the purpose of a source, I mean, why has this source been made at this specific time by this specific person using all of that evidence that we've gathered from the provenance? What is it trying to do at this time? Now, in order to identify the purpose, you need to include what we call in history a purpose word. So different sources at the time will have been made for different reasons. And on the board are some examples of some of the reasons that uh, some sources might have been made. So, for example, it could be to deter somebody from doing something, to encourage somebody to do something, to expose, to persuade, to indoctrinate, which means to brainwash, to mock to flatter, to intimidate a person or a group of people, to convince somebody of something. You need to be really careful though, another mistake that lots of year 11s tend to make is when they talk about the purpose of a source, they say, the purpose of this source is to show. That is not accurate enough and that's not necessarily good academic writing. Nobody in the 1930s or the 1940s has made this source to show students in the 21st century anything. They are doing this at this specific time for a specific reason. It's not to show anybody anything, it's to do something. And you need to work out what that verb word, that purpose word, is that relates to this specific source. And it could be one of those that I've already given to you on the board. The more purpose words you can have in your sort of word bank um, of knowledge from your retrieval practice, the better your answer will be. Okay, so we're not going to say the purpose is to show. I know I've said in step two, this shows us that, but that's relating to the quote, not the purpose of the source. The fourth step then is to fully explain what the purpose is by linking it back to the provenance. So if you've said the purpose is to intimidate somebody, that's great, that's a good start, but why is that the case? Link it back to the provenance, so the who, the what, the when. What do we know about the time that it was produced that helps our understanding of why they are doing that? What do we know about the person who's made it and what they want at that specific time? What is the source physically in front of you and how does this reveal our intentions about the focus, okay? So use the provenance to fully explain the purpose that you've identified. And then you're gonna use the sentence starter. The purpose of source A is to dot, 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 purpose word. This tells us that, or this is because, and that's where you're gonna link it back to the provenance to fully explain why that's been made at that specific time. So in terms of putting it together, you've, you've gone through all of the different steps, you've written your answer. How is my answer going to be marked by the examiner? So to bring this to life and to make it a little bit more um, straightforward to, to understand, I've put two um, answers up on the board. You've got answer A and you've got answer B. You've got the source again at the top, just in case you've forgotten what it was. What I would like you to do is uh, have a look at the box in the blue. Okay, those are the different steps that we've talked about uh, that make a successful answer. So an inference, support, identification of the purpose and explanation. I would like you to read through source, uh, sorry, answer A and answer B. So pause the video in a couple of seconds. And I would like you to try and find the inference, the support, the identified purpose word and the explanation of the purpose by linking it back to the provenance. If you've got an iPad, you could screenshot this screen and you could underline it and edit the photo that you've uh, taken a screenshot of. Or if you're just watching this on the phone, you, on your phone, you could do the same. If you're watching it on a laptop, you could just pause the video and try and underline it with your finger maybe. Pause the video here, take a few seconds to, to read through each answer. See if you can find out which one 
um, does which, and then see if you can have a go at giving it a mark. So I've put the mark scheme up on the board as well for you. Pause the video here, see if you can work out which answer is better and why. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to pause the video and have a read through those, and hopefully you've found each of the following things if they are included in the answer. And hopefully you've also started to think about, right, well, what mark would I give this out of seven and why? Let's go through answer A first. So they say, source A tells us that 60 people were executed during the Night of the Long Knives. A quote to support this is, all in all about 60. This shows us that many members of the SA were executed for treason. The purpose of source A is to show the reader that there were many people the Nazis considered traitors. Right, quite a short answer. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to be good, but let's break it down first of all. So, what's the inference that this person has made in answer A? Uh, answer A sorry. Well, they haven't really made an inference. They've just said, source A tells us that 60 people were executed during the Night of the Long Knives. If we go back to the diary at the top, they say all in all about 60. That's not an inference. That's not something about the Night of the Long Knives that we've kind of taken a bit of an educated guess about. We call this, as examiners, a surface feature. They have just lifted um, a part of the source and tried to include it as an inference. They've just told us something that we can see straight away in the source. Goebbels has told us 60 people have been executed. Answer A has told us 60 people have been executed. That's not an inference. That's not telling us about the Knights of the Long Knives as a whole. That's just lifting a certain part of the source and then kind of rewording it in, in your own words in the answer. They do include um, a quote to support this, but because the inference is uh, lacking and it's more about a surface feature, this doesn't really mean that we, we're going to get into this first um, proper band of, of three marks. Okay. They then go on to say the purpose of source A is to show. So they've done the cardinal sin of uh, saying the purpose is to show. We wouldn't be looking for the purpose being to show. We'd be looking for one of those purpose words there, so to deter to convince, to flatter, to mock, to indoctrinate, any of those. So saying that is a bit basic again. So at the moment, they're not, they haven't met any of the criteria really to get into those top, top marks because they have just used surface features to support their answer uh, with that first red underlined section. I would probably give this about two marks, okay? Um, they're, they're not really gonna get any higher than that because the inference isn't there uh, to begin with. Answer B then, let's have a look at answer B. Hopefully you've had a chance to have a read through it. What's the inference from answer B? Well, the inference is that the Nazis consider the SA to be a genuine threat to their rule and that Hitler struggled with his decision to execute members of the SA leadership. Now, you'll notice that this is obviously in a bit more detail. This is an inference about the Night of the Long Knives as a whole. They haven't just taken a section of the extract and just repeated it. They've actually told us something about the event as a whole and what the Nazis are thinking about it from the evidence that's being given. Now we'd be looking for a quote to back that up. So they use the quote of, that is difficult but necessary, there must be peace for 10 years. So straight away, because they have included a supported inference, I'd be arguing there are about five marks already. This is a very good start. They go on to develop what the quote actually tells us. So they say that it highlights that the lead, Nazi leadership believed the only way to hold on to their power was to eliminate Ernst Rom and other SA leaders, despite the fact that the SA had been instrumental in the Nazis getting into power in the first place. Right, this is a good start. Now let's see if they can have a go at identifying the purpose and fully explaining it. So hopefully you've managed to find out what the purpose word is here. You've got the fact uh, straight away that they are talking about that it's a private diary. So again, this is making a valid inference from the, per, uh, the source's production. So the fact that it's a diary written by the Minister of Propaganda. And they identify the purpose word, which is to inform. So it's to inform us of the genuine struggles that the Nazi leadership faced in dealing with the SA. Now, because it's a private diary, he's just informing kind of himself and, and reflecting on his own thoughts in this instance. He goes on, or she goes on in this answer, to uh, continue to link back to the provenance of the source. They're saying, well, actually, it's in the aftermaths of the arrests of, at the hotel in Bavaria, in Bad Vise. Um, so again, linking it back to the provenance. And they're saying, because they're linking it back, it's justifying the use of the uh, executions by the Nazis of these particular men. 
They then go on again to, to link to the context of times. This is at a time when the Nazi leadership were ruthlessly targeting perceived threats to their power in order to consolidate their le uh, leadership. So the sources evidence that the Nazis considered the Knight of the Long Knives a necessary step in securing their power even further. So what this answer has done very effectively is it has uh, identify the purpose to inform and justifying the thoughts but it also successfully links it back to the sources purpose production and receipt so it gets into that top mark of seven hopefully you found this answer useful we'll have a look at the next question which will be the 15 mark question in the upcoming video any questions please talk to your class teacher about this thank you for watching